Welcome to Pod Watcher, the official podcast of Watcher Entertainment. I'm Ryan Bergara. I'm Stephen Lim. And I'm Shane Madey. And this is a podcast where we chat about whatever's on our minds every week. This week we dive into Epic Universe. Family feud. And pencils. No. Huh? Again? Well, I got a shipment. And we're gonna try some out. This is the first time we're doing a double Ooh. header. It pencils part two. Two the pencils? Sequel. No, more than two pencils. No, I meant like pencil two pencil segments already. Yeah. You ever read the book the book Holes? Uh yes. I've n- I haven't read it. It was not really a part of my childhood. You know the People premise of it. The guy it's a boy has a working dig a, a hole every day. Yeah, digging, digging holes. Yeah. And he says it's like the first they say the first hole is the hardest. And then you get the second one. Oh, the second hole is the hardest. And then third hole is the hardest. So I should keep talking just about keep, pencils every yes, week? Yes, until it becomes not hard to talk about pencils. In the, it's or, never hard to talk about pencils. Well, but, hard isn't the right word for this. Maybe uh what about gr- soft? Grading. <laughs> grading. Grading. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll talk a little bit about pencils this week. The, when you were talking about digging a hole every day, I just recently discovered this guy who takes an ice bath every day outside in like the fucking snow. You're talking about the Wim Hof method or are you talking about oh, just this guy? Dangerous. He like literally like will break the like the ice in like a bathtub like with a hammer and then yeah, he'll just, do this and he'll just sit in that. He's done, like, tub. He's done like 400 and something days in a row and he'll <laughs> you would hate this. He, he would he does like little motivational uh, speeches in the tub every morning that sounds pretty funny i don't think you'd like it i think you'd be uh you'd, you'd think it's insufferable i feel like shane would like it i don't know there's a there's a one guy on uh i think he's like a tiktok man god i forgot his name he's like joey muscles or something but he <laughs> joe uh, rogan no it's not joe <laughs> rogan. oh yeah you gotta check this guy out you, have you heard uh, of it's him? a guy who um goes he picks apart like other people's gym videos yes i know who you're talking about joey yeah. swole joey swole is it good? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see these I videos. Guy. He's actually, yeah, he's pretty funny. He's great. He's so, no, he's very motivational, but also he like, you know, people will post a video where they're like making fun of someone's form at the gym or something. Yeah. be like, that is not what the gym is all about. You should support them. And instead of taking a video of them, you should go up to them and maybe show them. Oh my God, his helpful. face is getting red. For yeah. the listeners, his face just it's got a, beat like red. A, like a tomato. Actually, I'm, I think I'm wearing too many layers. layers. Well, it's you, toasty in here. You also are just a man of layers. <sighs> I love layers. Oh, I love layers. Is that a Midwest thing? I also, uh, I think so. Shane always looks like he's about to hit the slopes. But I was, you know, I was reading the uh, <laughs> forecast this week and we're due for about a week of rain coming up. Oh, oh fuck. And oh, I think Ryan. I start, I think That's going to suck ass, bro. <laughs> you're, you're a puppy owner now, so hey, you oh, know what it's boy. like to go outside. Oh, and, uh, there's boy, a little dog. covered area area out back though and oh, okay. i'll be able to go under that i've already bought a little square of astroturf in preparation oh ryan don't you have grass no i have astroturf but you're such a oh. responsible puppy father good for you well because i want him to get used to peeing on the turf and then yeah. not get used to peeing on the cement yeah because you you know yeah exactly you don't Ew. want peeing on the cement no you know it would get all over my shoes when i'm out there watching stuff yeah you uh, watch out there sport sport games, sports things? Uh, Football. Actually, the most recent thing I watched out there, I watched the Defunct Land video. Okay. Oh. And, uh, Were you in the pool? No, I had on my feet by our little fire pit, and boy, was I zonked out of my mind. <laughs> and boy, it was it was a great experience. It was myself, Byron, and my wife. <laughs> Is this episode brought to you nice. by one of those uh, gummies? You know what was great about it though was. Uh, and I, I, I've, I've talked about this video on Twitter a lot. It's incredible. Shane, did you actually ever watch it? No. Defunct Land, if you don't know him, he makes amazing little mini docs on YouTube. Or, actually, they're kind of like full-length documentaries now. They're not even mini anymore. But he made this like symphonic where he doesn't speak and it's all music that's original that he composed about the construction of Epcot. Anyways, it's incredible. And my wife did the thing where she walked outside because she had seen it once before. And she did that kind of thing that dads do on viral media. Yeah, where they're where they, watching they kind of just, movies standing up. Where they stand up, and she was standing there for a while, and then she just eventually sat down, and we watched it, the whole thing again. It's a 60-minute thing. I've watched 20 minutes of it. It is really good. I just, I have a, I have the attention span of a Gen Z kid, so I can't sit That's fair. more than one TikTok at a time. Well, you know, you know you're know, you missing out on some high art. Speaking I, of Mari, by the way, can I pivot real quick to a different topic? Yeah. Piv, piv. I, I just got out of a food show brainstorm just now, and the best idea that came out of that, and I, I slacked Ryan this, but was a Ryan and Mari cooking show, which I said we're not going to make. 
because Ryan is too overworked at this company. But I think that would be amazing and hilarious. Mari and I don't really cook that much. But we, that's why it would be amazing. Oh, gosh. Oh, we're such it, well, it's because you have the palate of a... Uh, it's what got a palate. What, what is his palate? palate? Watch your mouth. Yeah, I, I well, mean, you we, tell me. What is Ryan's palate? Actually, we have a pretty it's similar. It's very SoCal. Yeah, we have a very similar SoCal? palate, actually. It's got a very SoCal palate. I can't tell you how many times Shane and I are Taco on the road SoCal. and we will order something and we basically ended up ordering the same thing. Yeah. And not like one of us heard the other. It sometimes we'll be at like opposite ends of the table. I think, I think all three of us have a really nice taste for food and I, and you know there's there's an appreciation I, I was about to say yes, I, don't, I, don't, I think you do no, I have an appreciation for food I don't think I have a, I have a refined palate of any means I'm that. sure Stephen would have more to say about a lot of solely Ste- because you've also I think Stephen uses gone a trash a lot can later really as a plate fascinating well I have a lot of opinions about food I love food but I'm I'm just talking about Ryan specifically. Like, let's let's point at the top five beatdown episode that just came out. Okay, that food was vessels. not my fault. All right, that I wanted to put something like dumplings on that list for like food casings, and they should, wouldn't let. Me. They should have let you. That's BS. I don't know why they didn't let me. They didn't let me put tacos. But it, it colored so they made my me perspective put, like, of you. All purpose flour is what I had to put to get around it. It was, it was basically this was an episode of Top Five Beatdown where we had to rank our top five, uh, I guess, ways to uh, food delivery systems like. You know, like a pizza or something like that. You know what my number one would be? And they wouldn't let me say know? like pizza or they wouldn't say, let me say dumplings. I love how I'm saying they bun? and it's my own company. But uh, Shane's saying what, what his number one you know best what my would number be. one would be. I'm guessing hot dog bun. Chip. Chip. Okay. Ruffle chip. According to them, that would be tortilla and that would nullify. No, it. no, no. What? The the rules that the producers made it was on that a show. Confusing episode. It was Did this a episode very, happen. Yeah, yeah it, it already happen. came out. It just came out. Our content yeah. is so confusing. <laughs> <laughs> well, the topic came from Andrew, and I think it was interpreted multiple He's ways by different people, guy. different rules. Weird. Well, Ryan, you're here to talk about what was epic, your topic? Epic universe. <laughs> Though I am curious because I was thinking about the the hot the the cold plunge thing. And the guy who does motivational things, which I know you do hate, is have you ever no. seen a motivational phrase that actually ma- made you motivated? Where you were like, you took it in in earnest, and were like, you know what, I'm gonna go for it, go for it today. I'm gonna really, you know, get after it. Books, <laughs> books will do that. I was very hesitant to pick this up for a long time because, yeah, I don't, I don't know about these things. Uh, Rick Rubin's book, The Creative Act. Are you aware of that book? I actually am not, but he's the famous producer. Right? Of course, yes. Big, I've read it. Big bearded man. Well, I read a review of it that was like, a lot of this is pretty self-explanatory stuff. Some of it is pretty interesting. And a fraction of it is really, really brilliant stuff. And I was like, all right, I'm going to give this a go. Uh, and I was reading it this week. And I think it is actually very motivating and uh, inspiring stuff. Um, and also, some of it, I think you got to take with a grain of salt. Because at some point in the book, he was like, I was on the phone with my doctor and he said I had to get my, uh, what did he, uh, he had oh. to get something, his pancreas removed or something? Yeah, yeah, it was something very, and he yeah, was like, I, don't think it was- I was in a bookstore when he called me, so I walked to the nearest book and flipped it open to a random page, and the first line of the page was like, never surgically remove something in your body that does not have a function, so I never got it removed, and I'm still perfectly fine. And I was like, well, I don't know about that, Rick Rubin. <laughs> interesting, <laughs> interesting. Uh, I listened to the audiobook. Yeah. Um, which is him reading it. Hey, yeah. And I think and I did that for our audiobook. That's right. BuzzFeed on Salt. Yeah. Did you really? Yeah, we did. We I were. mean, I knew that. Yeah. <laughs> we did. Um, it. Is it good? So yeah. I, I do the thing where you like read it. Because uh, on an audio, Audible, you can have it like, you can read it if you get the ebook and the audiobook. Yeah, you can I, read it I learned that with my Kindle because I've been doing yes, East exactly. of Eden and it, like I downloaded the audiobook and it just picked up where I was reading. It remembers reading. exactly like, where it's for. It's Wait, incredible. what the fuck? Yeah, yeah so crazy. like I'll go on a walk, I'll read it on my on my Kindle and I'll get up and go on a walk and it's, it's Is there audio, like a audible. version of it that you have to buy that? Yeah, you have to get the the whatever their Some version bullshit. of it. But. Well, if this was sponsored by Kindle, this would be an amazing just yeah, kind of be. like... Remember well, they used to sponsor everybody uh, in the world? Yeah. I just don't... I just can't Kindle. Sorry. Yeah, I do I like a it. physical book. I, I can't... I, I don't know what it is about... I can't pick up an iPad and read it. It's like... I mean, I know... It's, and I know it's a... Their technology makes it feel Paper like a white. book, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's not the same. Sometimes I'll start a book on a Kindle and then if I'm like a third of the way into it and I really like it, I'm like, I got to go buy this and then I'll keep going with that yes. part. I wouldn't go that far, but that's what I do. Well, I mean, I've, 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 I've definitely bought books on Kindle and been like, I wish this was a book. Yeah. 
Also, a lot of times your library card uh, can get you ebooks. That's true for the Kindle. Um, um, yeah, but what I was saying about that is that he the book reads like him just talking. Yeah. Oh, for, interesting. Like it, it, yeah. it, it mm. kind of repeats himself in different ways, and yeah, as know. we all do. Today's sponsor is Copilot, and I'm so excited to let you know about them. Look, guys, I, I'm going off the cuff here a little bit. I, I use this thing every day. Or, you know, the days when I actually work out. And it helps me work out. It, I, I truly love it. It makes all of my workouts very fun and engaging. It feels like there's actually a trainer there with me. I, it, I really can't recommend it enough. Uh, and it has helped me actually stick to my schedule of working out, which for me has been a problem in the past. Anyways, you know, we've talked a lot on the show about how tough it is to fit working out into our busy schedules. And if that sounds like you... Copilot has heard the call and answered it. It's a personalized fitness solution. Copilot knows that every individual is unique, so your fitness journey should be too. Copilot's app links you with an affordable, real-life fitness coach, my guy, Mike. Good dude. And uh, that person will customize workouts tailored to your individual needs, goals, and lifestyle. Copilot knows all the reasons people don't get a regular workout in, weird schedule, injury, travel, and can design a plan to work with whatever your life has to throw at it. For example, I've had to go on shoots, or we just got a new dog and I wasn't getting a lot of sleep, so we adjusted my workout schedule so I could get my stuff in that week and not feel like I didn't accomplish my goals. Uh, With Copilot, you'll get completely personalized workouts with step-by-step guidance. Your coach continuously updates and adapts every workout to your goals, schedule, and injuries. And Copilot is as flexible as you are with workout programs designed around your specific lifestyle and your ability to work out at your convenience with or without a gym. Uh, you know, I, I have a little a little home gym in my garage. It's not it's not something spectacular, but with the equipment that I have, I told that to my trainer at Copilot, and he worked that into a schedule that works with the limited equipment that I have, as well as the equipment that I would find at all the various hotels that I live in when we're traveling for, you know, ghost files or, you know, touring or things like that. It, it's fantastic. To give Copilot a try to find out why it was listed by Forbes as the top rated personal trainer app of 2023, head to mycopilot.com slash watcher to get a 14 day free trial and 20% off your first month of personalized fitness with your own personal trainer. Sign up now and let Copilot help you reach your fitness goal. That's mycopilot.com slash watcher to get a free 14-day trial and 20% off your first month. Sign up for the new year and let Copilot help you reach your fitness goals. The other other book that I had read a long time ago that moved me in a similar way is called The uh, The War of Art. Read that too? Yeah. Steve, Another Stephen great, Pressfield. Not The Art of War. Not The Art of well, War. What, what you've, is... you've stumbled upon the <laughs> clever title. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's a whole book about just like create stuff now which is like that's the ethos of the book that's all Mm. they're telling you but it's it really hammers it home in a way that that can really get you off so that's kind of like a non-fiction i guess i was that makes sense but then again i still can't imagine you reading something like the subtle art of giving a fuck or not giving a fuck or like something like Um, uh, i I read a book called the uh, atomic habits yeah that was helpful i mean read that too (laughs) yeah i don't doubt that i could find value in that stuff but I, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is not so much even the book world. I'm talking about like your, like your Instagram uh, oh, motivational hate, yeah. phrase, I, I generally posts of the world. It's, like, it's like a sunset. No, with mo- a bridge. It's, it's sometimes they'll usually have a sunset picture and the caption will be it. Or sometimes- Who's those guys on the bus? Sometimes it'll literally just be the text in the I actual Instagram guys. picture itself. Kind of like something you would embroider on a pillow. Yeah. Like the mm. live, laugh, loves of the world. Have you ever seen anything like that that actually made you go, huh, okay. Well, not really. They, I find them to be annoying, but I, no. I, think, I think the only one I could think of was uh, just be better than yesterday. That's the only thing that ever kind of like sank into me. That's nice. Because I find myself comparing myself a lot. And then if I'm just, if well, I'm just competing against myself from yesterday, much easier. Sometimes I, I think past Ryan's better than current Ryan. Shit, me too, dude. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just messing with I you. I think that all the I'm time. I'm just messing with you. No, no, that's not the And then there. I put my mind into the mind of past Ryan. I'm like, hey, this, up. And I'm like, this guy sucks too. Um, um, you know, thinking of that though, you know what actually did resonate with me back in the day? Do you remember Post Secret? You remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. secrets that, that yeah, yeah, yeah. Anonymous. cards to... 
can't remember if it was like a Tumblr account or if it was just an actual website. I, I remember back in the day being like, some nice thoughts here, some nice thoughts. Yeah. Then they put it in a book, which my parents got me for my birthday or something. Nice. Yeah. Some nice thoughts in Do you remember cards. any particular thoughts? Were some of them dark? Some of them were dark. It was people telling secrets, but some of them were more affirmation-like. Mm. Because your mind, Shane, is very much like a skeleton key. There are certain specific configurations of it that will penetrate your mind and actually like resonate with you. Yeah. But it needs to be incredibly specific and I can't even, after being around you for so long, I can't even quite figure out like what genuinely excites and uh, activates your mind. Why are you describing Shane like he's like a labyrinth? Because he is kind of like, he's a labyrinthian I man. I, I, I think that's a compliment. I think I, I think I need to be really like struck or surprised by something. For yeah, to, yeah, yeah. To, you know, because like, there's plenty of good advice that is not profound, you know, that won't really stick with me. So I just don't pay attention to it. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't listen to it. Nice <laughs> Eat breakfast. <laughs> what, Who what cares? Out of curiosity then, and just to you too, Stephen, what, what is the best piece of advice you've ever been given? <sighs> I'm curious. I'm genuinely curious. I don't know. I don't, this is like when people are like, what's your favorite movie? I'm That's like, not. Are know, you trying to bring back the advice podcast? That we no, had, I'm Ryan? just curious. Has someone something ever been said to you where you're like, "Oh, I actually use that all the time." This is not the answer to your question, but it is an advice that I got from my dad a long time ago that helped me. I'll, I'll give this one. I am excited to hear this. Well, like I, I get paralyzed when people ask me questions sometimes because I don't know how to answer them, or if they're asking me like to do something for them, or like you want to go out and party, you know. Like I just, I have social anxiety. Like, I, I'm an introvert. I don't want to go out. So like, I sometimes people react ask me a question i just don't respond which is i don't think it's the right way to go yeah but my dad was just like all you have to say is yes no or maybe and just just answer like that and then you can you know you can always change your mind that's later. great advice yeah no sorry it wasn't yes it was yes no i don't know that was the that was what he oh, said today. That's more which impressive. is you know a little bit yeah i think a little better yeah you people could get out of a lot of binds i think by just saying i don't know more often yeah let's talk about uh epic universe oh yeah Epic Universe. Tell us all about it, Ryan. You're well, excited. Oh, my God. What is it? I don't want to go too in-depth. I just want to get you the broad strokes. Basically, they're building a brand new theme park from the ground up in Universal Orlando okay. Resort. Isn't this why you have a theme park podcast? It is, but we don't talk about like news. So basically today, at the recording of this podcast, Universal released a seven-minute video that just outlines what it's going to be like. Whoa. And it's two times the size of Universal Orlando and all of the lands... Like you've been to like Universal now when they have like crazy immersive lands that are well thought out and a lot of budget. Every one of the lands in this park is going to be like that. There's like oh. a center hub and there's five portals. There's like a how to train your dragon land. There is a uh, one of my favorite movies. There's a dark universe, Great which movie. is based off of all the universal monsters. It's actually going to be scary. With That's like, going to be so dude. I, they showed the renderings of the Wolfman and Frankenstein and Dracula. Really Harry, dude, they are they're going for them being scary. They said that in the in the in the video. Said Harry, not scary. Well, both. Okay. I think there's a Wolfman roller coaster. Whoa. Uh, go through a bunch of hair. No, you go through like a farm and then there's like a windmill that's on fire, apparently. Damn. And then there's like a couple other, there's like one like the, like a space land. Uh, I remember when they, they, there were like leaks of potential like, uh, like the portals to the land. Exactly. And everyone was like, that looks like monsters. It, and it and was. I got really excited. Well, I've been following theme park stop. Who's going to be on the, for your amusement eventually here. I think she's coming on soon. Alicia Stella. But the portals, the entries to the lands, they look like video game portals that you would jump through and then you're like now in there, which fits perfectly for Super Nintendo World, which they're building. That's cool. Which is going to be huge there, much bigger than the one we have here. The Donkey Kong coaster, I had seen the patents for this for a while. It's a track that looks like you're jumping onto a broken piece of track and landing on another piece no, of track. No, I can't do that. Which is, but it only That's looks bonkers. like it. It's an optical illusion. There's a, another- like an arm or something. So the, the, the track that you think you're jumping over is just kind of a show track. And the actual track is this thin rail under the roller coaster. Oh my god! So it makes it look like you're jumping between broken pieces of track, like in the Donkey Kong. Does this happen repeatedly on the ride? I don't know, but I That's saw the test. Dope. I saw them testing it with mannequins, and it looks fucking sick. Wow. That's going to be fun. Also, it's just, this kind of just goes to something that I enjoyed doing when I was growing up and still do, obviously, now, which is following a project from start to finish. It feels satisfying when it's done to be able to see it because yeah. you were there in the beginning. Like, I've been following the progress of this for the past couple of years. Yeah. 
And so now that we're so close, like a year away and everything, you're starting to see the form of all the concept art. So Ghost Files season four will be six locations in and around. It'll be all Orlando. Orlando. (laughs) I suspect. No, I think Byron and I will try and make our way out to Epic Universe. God, uh, I at, hope. What if they invited us? Oh my God, that'd at be the very end of our tour. Uh, they put us up in the Hard Rock Orla- Hotel, Orlando. Orlando, and it was so luxurious, it's fucking beautiful. <laughs> I guess I have never stayed at a Hard Rock hotel. Neither have I, and uh, so I wasn't like particularly looking forward to it. But the day or two before we went there, because mostly on the tour, we're not staying at fancy. Who places. put you no. up there? Did we? Did I, I think it was, was it a deal with the venue? I hit them up. Oh, oh you did? <laughs> I hit them up. I was like, I, I like did, did this come out of Watcher's budget? No, I hit them up and they, and then, uh, then I got them. Is to this why us. we can't afford Matt Royale anymore? Well, I hit them up and they, ra- and then they. Am I getting fired? <laughs> in a, in a, in, as long as I were to, to, you know, post and whatnot, they, they let us get tickets as well. Um, um but, uh. Yeah, like a day or two before we went there, I was looking at it online when we were on the tour and I was like, holy shit, this place is really nice. And I was nervous because the entirety of the tour, I was talking it up to you and Lizzie. I'm saying like, this place is like a deluxe resort. I cannot wait to go to this. And so when we were pulling up, I was like, God, I hope this place is actually cool because it would be so embarrassing. They have a pool there, Stephen, (gasps) that pipes the music in that they're playing at the pool underwater. So you could hear it crystal clear underwater while you're swimming. It's, is this a Hard Rock? Uh, is that a luxury chain? I didn't know anything about Hard it's Rock. So, uh, I know the Hard Rock Cafe, which is I've eaten there before. Which Hard Rock we, one of our shows was at the Hard Rock. That's also why it happened. Uh, I see. so uh, and that place was awesome and huge as well. But the uh, the the thing that it is, it's part of the Universal Orlando Deluxe Package. So like Universal has like hotels that are around its theme parks that like fall into different categories, and this is their deluxe mm. uh, category. And uh, man. But then again, Epic Universe has a hotel that's in the theme park, like, like literally in the middle of the theme park. Do they so, have themed rooms? I have no idea. I just, That'd I just fun. think it's cool to be able to go downstairs like you're in Vegas and then just <laughs> go on a ride. That's pretty cool. So is it a, is it a completely different park separate from? It's a completely new, different park. Is it a, attached to the other one? No, or? it's 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 you have to take some sort of. It's close enough. Like I think it'd be like a short, like maybe five minute bus ride, or you could probably walk there. It's uh, but it's a completely different site, and it's, so they're removing the Harry Potter land from the one that exists. No, oh, no, no. There's a, a, there's a Harry Potter land in all three of the parks, and they all are, uh, have like thematic links, things. and you could That's travel dope. to them between. Like you could take the Hogwarts Express from one land to the other, and actually be in the other oh, theme park. Oh, I see. So, what is but the new Harry Potter thing? Again? They're doing Ministry the Ministry of, of Magic, Magic. and uh, the par- and the Paris Harry Potter from uh, Fantastic Beasts, Oof. which whatever, but. The thing is, it's just, it's it's a completely new theme park, which really hasn't been done in decades before. Like, mm-hmm. everything that's been done lately in the theme park world Additions. has been an expansion, mm-hmm. or even in the case of Disneyland California, more like a replacement, taking the spot of something else, because there's not enough land. In Orlando, there's plenty of land, and I guess Universal just, I don't know how they came across this large parcel of land that they could build a completely new theme park that's two times bigger than the one that's next to it. But Well, that sounds really exciting. I hope we get to check it out sometime. I'm, I'm not going to even be as casual. Please invite me. <laughs> please invite me. <laughs> invite to, previews, previews. To, to Epic Universe. Invite Watcher, please. We will make a special FYA episode. No, we'll a, we'll stop. Make, stop. Stop plugging FYA on no, Pod Watcher. No, hey, we'll stop man. it, Ryan. We'll make a whole season. It's the people's podcast. No, <laughs> we're making Pod it's Watcher. the people's podcast. At the theme park. We'll make both. How about that? How, we'll we'll, make we'll both. give you two for one. <laughs> you should start opening that show by saying it's the people podcast. This is welcome the- to for your en- amusement. Uh, sorry, I, <laughs> I didn't even fucking wrong. know the name. <laughs> I confuse it with the uh, CD store from the nineties. <laughs> yeah, FYE. No, oh, nice man. For your amusement, the people's podcast. The people's podcast. You can't call that. And I'm that. the people's podcaster, Ryan Bergara. You can't you call that. You could say that. I think I could say I that. I think you it's need one the, people's title. The, you think The Rock people checked people. with anybody when he named himself the, the, the people's, uh, when the people's elbow? Is that what he called himself? I don't he think... didn't call himself that, but he called one of his moves he did. The people's the elbow. elbow. Was it him who came up with it, though? Or yes, was somebody else? It was really that. cool, too. Someone would be on the ground, and he would dance over them, and he would take off one of his elbow pads for the listeners. I'm taking off an elbow pad very slowly. And then he would kind of like sensually toss it into the audience. And then he would do this kind of like crazy like Donkey Kong kind of dance. That's cool. And then he would bounce back and forth on the ropes and then, you know, kind of wiggle around in the air and then just fall on them with his he elbow. He should go back to doing that He stuff, does every now and then. He does. You should fight him. Moana! I, 
I you know, live you'll, action. I will fight you the rock. You want to hear something really scary? Yeah. He's the same height as you. Just picture that for a second. And that means he's really dude is a mountain of a man. He's, <laughs> he's wide. Dude, those are some <laughs> thick arms. I think his arms might be bigger than your and I's arms combined. Yeah, I think that's very safe to say. I think so. Okay. He's wow. six four, right, Matt? Yeah. He's six yeah, he is six four. Because I remember looking at him, I was like, maybe he looks that big because he's like, he's six, like seven. No, maybe because he's like my height. And oh, then, I, I guess I was picturing him taller. But yeah, I guess he, he, if you assumed he was a little guy. I thought he was like a Mark Wahlberg. You know how, how Mark tall? Wahlberg looks like huge, but he's like... Let's play guess how tall. I, I've been wanting us to do this for guess so how long. Tall. Um, Schwarzenegger. I'm going to guess six. I'm going to six. Say six. Really? No, 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 six feet, six feet. Was six, 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 one. No, six. Can we like, make this a segment real quick? Yes, so yes, yes. Guess how tall. Okay. Uh, and just then, can you say, look at the camera and say, uh, now we're going to play. Now we're going to play Guess How Tall. Great. That's pretty good. And feel free to select other ones or you can leave it up to us. Arnold for Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger. I think he's six. You had six. I think six, I six, six one. Steve's got six, six two. two. which is kind of cheating because now Shane's going to lose no matter what, unless he's on the dot. Well, that's the goal. Let's find out. Arnold Arnold Schwarzenegger is six two. Oh shit! Bing. Wow, he's sense. much bigger than I thought he would be. Yeah, politicians tend to be taller. Who else do we want? Stallone guess? was small though. Stallone. Right? Stallone. Stall Stallone's got to be like five seven or something. I'm gonna guess. You can play along at home as well. Don't look. Don't look. <laughs> five nine. <clears throat> I was gonna say five nine as well. I'm we locking in both five nine. It. Five nine. Yeah. Oh. What? What? Did you, oh yeah. I said five seven. Now I'm starting to doubt my answer. No. Well, it's not Price is Right rules. Lock in. I'm going to go 5'7". Lock in. I'm going to stick with the original. Sylvester Sloan <laughs> measures in at a height of 5 feet 10 inches. Hey, Whoa! Okay. Oh, shit! He's bigger than I thought. <laughs> this is Ryan's response to everything. I, he's bigger than wait, I thought. Wait, wait, Well, it's because normally people, people are smaller than you. Like, he's bigger than guess I thought. Ro guess Robert De Niro's height. Bobby D. You already know this. He, he, he you know knows it. this, though. I don't know this I answer. Know it. That's why. I have no idea, I can't actually. play. Um... Six feet even. Oh, I was going to say like five nine, but I have no idea. Robert De Niro stands at uh, a similar height to Sylvester Stallone, five ten. Five ten. Okay. Oh. In, which I you know, were wrong. It's which which I I have on. You good thought at, he was shorter. I know you're oh, shorter. He's wearing he's wearing lifts. Oh. Now you're doing. Now you're doing. Some so it's really just five eight. Stuff. No, oh, I no. just know this because I I I uh, Mari and her dad have stood next to him. Yeah, and I I've seen it. Uh, he's he's. No, I mean, it's, it's like NBA players, you know, yeah, they say, say they're this, wherever this, it hides. Oh, sorry for the listeners. Shane, you have a very good Robert De Niro face. Today's episode is sponsored by Microdose Gummies. And listeners, these are a pod watcher favorite. Listen, if you ask me, there's absolutely nothing better than that beautiful space between amped up and well rested. Oh, I like that. Yeah, where your body's relaxed, but your mind is at ease and perfectly in the moment. Okay, all right. You know, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, I'm picking it up, yeah. <laughs> and you're putting it down. <laughs> anyway, microdose gummies can help you get into this wonderful zone and stay there longer. Microdose gummies deliver perfect entry-level doses of THC that help you feel just the right amount of good. I and like I tell that. you what, I feel good. <laughs> I feel pretty good right now, too. <laughs> and, you know, people are finding all sorts of things that microdosing can benefit. From workout recovery, boosting creativity, spicing up the sex life. What do you What do you think about that? Well, that's a little spicy for me, oh, brother. Okay, that's true. Uh, you do have that Trust talent. me, I love these gummies, and you're going to as well. Get 30% off your first order, plus free shipping today at microdose.com. Promo code WATCHER. It's available nationwide. That's microdose.com, promo code WATCHER, for 30% off and free shipping. Microdose.com, promo code WATCHER. So nice, I said it thrice. Interesting. Well, what have you learned? What have you learned? Uh, okay, so this is very interesting. This is very interesting. Okay. I, 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 his friend Al Pacino, they've been together his a lot. His friend Al Pacino? Yeah. I okay, thought yeah. well, Al Pacino is famously short guy. Yeah. yeah. I thought, well, well, let's find some photos of them next to each other. There's a height difference of about uh, Al Pacino's 5'6". Can we put this in the podcast? Yeah, yeah sure. we can. Uh, here's a photo of Robert De Niro next to Al Pacino, Here famously 5'6". Oh, boy. Whoa! I told you. I told you, man. Yeah. Yeah. And also, Pacino's slouching a little there. Yeah. Weird to see like such like a famous face. Yeah, everywhere they go. Yeah. Don't make no sense. Something don't add up. That math ain't mathing. Unless Al Pacino's in, in lifts. 
Uh, but he's not. He doesn't. He doesn't seem to care about us. I, I don't know. He, he doesn't care. Yeah, who cares? He's out there dancing with side. So he's five six. So maybe Robert De Niro is like five six, five seven. That's what I was saying. All right. Well, who? I don't know who won that. that now that's not one of my segments. No, I mean that game. That was a segment that came in the moment. You know, it came in the moment. The reason why it came up was just because I was like, The Rock must be a smaller guy just in height because there's no way someone could be that large. And when I found out he was your height, yeah. which I had a very like good idea of how tall they that I, I just, I was, guy. I was scared of him. Well, <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. Guess the Height, a really fun game. Good stuff. Anyways, yeah. go to Epic Universe. The, the Rock is fucking huge. Yeah. It's kind of everybody's height here. It's got wow. Shane, Steven, Ryan. I want to know, what does the internet <laughs> so. think how tall I am? Uh, the internet says six feet. Flat. That's accurate. Ryan, yours is five. I think on a good day, I'm six feet, accurate. which is not true. I think on a bad day, I'm five <laughs> eleven and three quarters. So I'm I'm somewhere in between there. I'm clocking in a little a little under most mostly now because I'm older. Yeah, like Robert De Niro. I'm shrinking. Yeah, yeah. Shane Day, six four. That's on a good day. And on a good day. and I'm more like five nine. I'm not five ten. On a good day, That's fucking crazy. Or no, a normal day. I'm, well, I'm just subpar of that. So I guess you could call it a good day. Sure. Yeah, day. yeah. So maybe yeah. you and Sylvester Stallone are the same height. I could. Whoa. St- Stallone? You and Stallone, eye to eye. I don't think so. You could you be on the demolition. Demo- you think, think you're taller than You guys could be on the Demolition Man cover together like him and Wesley. Am. Oh, we got to get the guy on TikTok who like figures out everyone's height based yeah. on like of things they're standing near. That's crazy. We can get him to do it with you and Sylvester Stallone. Anyways, that was Epic Universe. Uh, should we move on to. To, I don't want to talk about pencils again right now. It's cool. so you're gonna have well, to eventually. We, uh, I know. My topic is Family Feud. I don't really have much to say, but I did say last week I'll talk more about it. So I don't know. What do you want to hear about Family Feud? I want to know about. I want to hear about Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey. Actually, it was an interesting episode. Um, so I went because I went with Simu, who was a celebrity guest. Yeah, and we played against uh, Nathan Chen, who is the uh, you know the gold medalist. Uh, well, you skater. were a celebrity guest too, Stephen. I was the guest of the celebrity guest. You were a celebrity guest. Guest. It what was, was it like? So I grew up on Family Feud. I love the show, and I love guesting. You know, it, it's it's one of the most universal game shows of all time. Yeah, one of my favorite things to look at on YouTube is Steve Harvey reacting to dumb answers on Family. That's Feud. like the that's the it's best the part of the show. Uh, honestly, we should go on there one day when Watcher um, becomes big enough for Harvey to give us a call. God, I'd love for him to just fucking roast my ass. Oh, he roasted us. Did he? Yeah, what yeah, he yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I mean, so we went on, and then the, one of the one of the question prompts was like something about um, it's like what would a stripper leave behind uh for uh like a on a graveyard for one of their clients. What? What? The what? Good question. Oh, Yo, geez. what the fuck is that question? I know it was like a really wild question. Wait, at a graveyard? Yeah, like what, what would they? What would they like? Pay? How would they pay respects to like a client? They're they're setting oh. Steve up to be outraged by the not outraged but scandalized. By yeah, the yeah, answer. we was yeah. definitely that. And then obviously, like our wives were in the crowd, and so we were making jokes about how. Well, one of, one of my friends was like, "Yeah, I'd never been to a, a strip club before," and you know, I mean, you know, it, it landed uh, Harvey. Harvey laughed, and uh, it was a good time. I like when Steve laughs because his mustache is so big, so you could really see it like, bouncing up and down. Oh, yeah. Beautiful mustache. Um, Maybe the only mustache that's better than Matt Rial's. Yeah. Appreciate you saying that. But the most memorable part of it was actually when the cameras were off. I don't know if you've heard of like Steve Harvey and how he is like off the show. No. But he's like as charismatic and as talkative as he is on the show. Oh, yeah. he does like motivational He does stuff. like motivational speeches to the crowd. It's like he like, he, like is... Literally during the commercial break, when I would, if I was him, I'd be like, I'd go off the stage and like take a break, you know, yeah. wipe my sweat off. He's literally talking to people in the crowd and like asking them questions about their lives and saying like, what, like, you know, what do you want to do with your life? How do you want to oh, like see your future? And he's like giving them talks about how he grew up broke and how like, you know, he had to change everything. And I don't know. It's just, that was cool to see. Like he was like on from like, that's fun. Beginning yeah. to end. He was on. Some shows have like a, you know, a crowd worker to do that they do yeah yeah but i've heard like drew carey does that on um price is right well he was also one of the few people that was like very, very helpful during the strike i i heard yeah a, i heard a story that and this is true because i have friends that are in the wga he actually said that any writer that went to bob's big boy during the period of the strike he would cover their meal oh wow and that was like so pe- all a lot of writer friends i knew were going to bob's big boy and just well that's sweet of steve not Steve, Drew Carey. Oh, Drew Carey. Oh, nice. Good. Yeah. 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 
Uh, the only thing that happened with Steve during the writer strike was that funny picture of him that looks like a cheeseburger. The, no, it's the, the cheeseburger, cheeseburger that looks, that looks like, like Steve, Steve Harvey. Yeah. Why, why does cheeseburger this. look like Steve Harvey? <laughs> I'm trying to the mad to pull it up. I want to see the <laughs> cheeseburger. It it's so fucking funny. And Steve Harvey actually commented on it. He's like, please stop sending this to me. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> It does look like him, though, dude. I have no comment. Is in the caption why this cheeseburger look like Steve Harvey? <laughs> why do they give me these big onion slices? My burger look like Steve Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it was it was a fun time. We actually like completely dominated Nathan's team. I felt so bad because oh, shit. we won every like every buzzer. Yeah. And so we did every round. Well, you have an ultra competitive group of pounds. Oh my God. We all play video games together. And, you know, we were the night before we were all hanging out, just like practicing, like buzzing the questions. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, like, just playing and then, whack a mole in your hotel room. And then, that, no, it was like a, <laughs> yeah, okay, basically. But then, like, also, if, okay, for, you know, how at the end they have like the, the survey questions. Fast and, money. Fast money. You guys know fast money? Uh, no. How is it different? For, how does the show work? So, so the so <laughs> the way it works is you have two people go up to a buzzer and they ask them one question, like, okay, uh, what is the most popular? So that is still yeah, French that's fry. still. How is the end survey part different from the that? End part? is it's like they ask you five questions and you oh. just have five answers, okay, and then you just add them up. And between you and somebody else, you have to add the two hundred points across both of those five questions. I see. So, so it's like uh, name a day that that you do laundry. We. And then you say Wednesday, right? Survey said nobody said Wednesday. Uh, and then, <laughs> I would say and then, Sunday. And then Ryan gets su- if seventy people said seven. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then so, so, then, so yeah. Oh, so then in the next, you're trying to tally you it each all. Go five. Yeah. You, and go, then the you go five, person, five, one, two, three, four, five. And then the the second person can't hear. I see. I love game shows so much. Well, so. Family Feuds are really great. It's, it's, it's really know. fun. So anyway, I want to ask that because I want to know of the three of us, who would we want on Fast Money? I think it would be pretty good at it. You were on Fast Money, right? I was not on Fast Money. I was a, not chosen Can you for give Fast us a Money. Fast Money? Uh, is there a, a template yeah, or a, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> I, I, oh. I want to be a game show I, I so think, bad. This is just exactly what I want to do. I think Shane would be good at it, but also maybe you might be bad. Yeah, because he's because you you think different. weird. He thinks weirdly. Yeah, I think he thinks too. But weird. I can also tap into the mind of, you of know, America. Sheep. America. He, he thinks of like a sheep. That was the thing. So I'm from Illinois. The mind of a sheep. Wait, all the memories are coming back from the show. <laughs> right before the show starts, the producer calls us and says, "Hey guys, just want you to you to remember, don't overthink anything. Just really think about the most basic answer. Well, don't the over- biggest problem with the show that they say is." People think too far, too many levels in. It's always the most basic answer. If you were going to do a fast money of what are the worst things you could say to Ryan Bergara, number one on the list would be don't overthink this. <laughs> <laughs> Survey says 100. It, I would overthink it 1,000. Um, so, so how fast money works is that one person goes, they are asked five questions, they have to answer, uh, if they provide an answer, but the other person cannot hear it. Yes. Right? Right. So the fast money example would be it's kind of weird because we have multiple people in here and they're all listening to the other. It's answer. fine. Uh, we could write them down. Nah, nah, nah. It's or I could step out and then let's do that, Ryan. I'll step out. You step out. <laughs> oh, Wait, should I step out? Yeah, yeah. We'll do all three. All right. <laughs> okay, so, great. This is right fun. now. What's happening? I all this right. show is a mess. But yeah, it's right. fulfilling my game show dreams. Here we go. Here we go. Um, okay, we asked a hundred people. I can see them through the glass. They're that, watching. They fine. can't hear us. This I is hope great. not. What's what's something that you what's something you drink to make you warmer? Tea. Name something that can be spoiled. Milk. Name a city that is best known for its nightlife. New York. Uh, name a place where you often find an elevator. An office building. Uh, name a style of music that you'd be surprised to hear that a teenager you listen to. Classical. Great. That's, that's your that's fast me. money. Okay. That's you so you, don't, have, you don't have to run anywhere. I can pause it for a second here. Bzz, bzz, ah! That's the sound of you shaving. Buzz, buzz. Ah, yeah, this is nice. That's the sound of me shaving, because I use Henson Shaving Blades. Henson Shaving is a family-owned aerospace parts manufacturer that has made parts for the ISS, that's the International Space Station, and Mars Rover. And now, they're bringing precision engineering to your shaving experience. You see, razor blades are like diving boards. The longer the board, the more wobble, the more nicks, cuts, and scrapes. A bad shave 
isn't a blade problem. It's an extension problem. By using aerospace-grade CNC machines, Henson makes metal razors that extend just 0.0013 inches, which is less than the thickness of a human hair. Hair? That means a secure and stable blade with a vibration-free shave. One of my least favorite things about shaving is how quickly the blades get all gunked up. Henson is different. These razors have built-in channels to evacuate hair and cream. Get it out of there. Which makes... (laughs) Which makes clogging virtually impossible. That's impossible. Seriously. Henson Shaving wants the best razor, not the best razor business. That means no plastic, no subscriptions, no proprietary blades, and no planned obsolescence. What, what, What does obsolescence mean? It's like when they are like, you got to, these are going to go bad. So you're going to have to buy all these blades gotcha. again. And yeah. we can keep that in. So the viewer knows. Good. The Henson razor works with standard dual edged blades to give you that old school shave with the benefits of new school tech. Once you own a Henson razor, it's only about three to five dollars per year to replace the blades. Tell me a better deal than that. I'm waiting. It's time to say no to subscriptions and yes to a razor that'll last you a lifetime. Visit Henson shaving.com slash watcher to pick the razor for you and use code watcher and you'll get two years worth of blades free with your razor just make sure to add them to your cart that's 100 free blades when you head to h-e-n-s-o-n-s-h-a-v-i-n-g dot com slash watcher and use code watcher how do you spell that again Let's all do it together. Yeah, here we go. H e n s o n s h a v i n g d o t c o m slash watcher. There, yeah, we're gonna bring in. We're gonna bring, bring in, in one Steve, more. We're gonna bring in Stephen here. Bring in one more. Now, do right, yeah. Now, now you don't react. I'm not gonna react to these. Okay. All right. Here we go. <laughs> this is our, this is our application to be on Family Feud. Your your teammate your teammate Shane is is there to answer these questions. He did a great job. Great. Good to hear. Uh, you need, I can't see. I can't, don't, don't worry about giving me the number. Just, just tell me the questions. All right. Ready? All right. Can What's, I, can I say the things he said? No. Okay. Oh, so, he's not supposed to say anything that I said? So you're going to buzz if he, if I repeat the thing he said. Correct. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. All right. 60 seconds on the clock. Let's go. What's something that you drink to make you warmer? Tea. Eh. Coffee. Uh, name something that can be spoiled. Chicken. <laughs> Name a city that is best known for its nightlife. A city? Yes. Vegas. Name a place where you of- often find an elevator. New York. Name a style of music that you'd be surprised that a teenager listened to. Country. Great job. Great answers. Okay. Great answers. All right. Ryan! We're bringing Ryan in here. He, uh, Ryan was in the bathroom. Let me see. Ryan is uh, taking a pee pee. Here he comes. All right. Here he comes. This is fun. I want to know what Shane This is said. really fun. Get, get in here. It is. Yeah, I was, I was surprised how I couldn't hear anything. The second one, I was like, oh, what? I, All right, I here even... we go. All right, your teammates did a great really job, good. and you're hoping to uh, punch over 215. I'm not going to tell you the number because I haven't done the math yet. Great, great, great. Um, All right, 60 seconds on the clock. Oh, God, I'm nervous. <laughs> Name something that you drink to make you warmer. Uh, tea. Uh-uh. Uh, uh, hot chocolate. Name something that can be spoiled. Milk. Uh, uh, cheese. <laughs> Name a city that's known for its nightlife. A Miami. Name a place where you often find an elevator. Apartment building. And name a style of music that you'd be surprised to hear that a teenager listened to. Country. Right. Uh, uh, fuck. Um, let's, uh, ooh, uh, our, Motown. Great job. Great answers. All Great right. Answers. All right. So you really, need, really good work. You needed, um, you needed uh, 215 points, according to this quiz. Shane got 163 hey, points. Oh. <laughs> that's really good. Oh, thank you. So exactly. that's like the top couple. Went I went first. first yeah. Yeah. Well, the first person normally ideally does the best. Yeah, but if yeah, you needed yeah, 200 yeah. points, your teammate came out and they needed uh, they only needed well, to get like 37. 40, 40, 40. Yeah. Uh, hey. Very, very good. Hey, team, Let's go. You guys had a lot of the same answers. You definitely give it a name. Uh, what's something that you drink to make you warmer? Number one answer, coffee. Uh, hey. Steven got that hot chocolate second answer tea uh, third answer second? great job I went with tea right. it's hot to the name I guess you're right name Pocho. something that can be spoiled milk number one answer with 56 points hey. uh, food which is what you said 
17 uh and food would have gone into the oh, other one but i kind of messed it up but i'm making this up as i go along yeah name a city that's known for its nightlife number one answer new york number two answer las vegas i would have said miami you too. said new york oh i said new york yeah shane said new york yeah that was my first um, number one two and answers uh three's then, miami gotta be right and no a los angeles then new orleans Oh, I, I just I would live. I thought Miami, I, 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 I thought Miami, Miami was Miami a really Miami good. Answer. I live in LA, and it's definitely Miami. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not yeah. LA. Yeah. Name a place, but you're asking average Americans. That's know. true. Uh, name a place where, and we have a lot of basement rave parties. That's true. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. which I frequent. We all the time. being Matt, it's like <laughs> Babylon now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fighting. I'm fighting security guards, and they're like, I'm Batman. Uh, name a place where you often find an elevator. Number one answer is hotel. Number two answer mall. Oh man, mall. mall. Yeah, number three, number true. three, sixteen office building, eleven points. That was Shane and oh, Okay. Uh, name a style of music that you'd be surprised to listen to. Number one classical. answer, classical, Damn. forty-three points. Country number two, jazz. Number three, opera. Number four, jazz Motown gets you zero points. Yeah, but you did a great job. You did a great job. And you're going home with I think twenty-five thousand dollars. I think. Oh well. my yeah. god! Oh, by the way, <laughs> all right. The greatest moment is when you win fast money. It is like yeah? the yeah. most unbelievable. Yeah, because everyone rush. goes nuts. I've ever had in my life. Are they are they pumping more in? than your? Oh no, yeah, yeah. They, they, they throw the confetti. Lights are moving. The lights go pumping crazy. Music. Do you hear music? It goes, da, music goes nuts. Da, 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 Steve's congratulating. Yeah. Da, da, da. I did a snow angel in the confetti. Yeah, wow. I don't know if you can see it in the, the in the show, the music but it's, it's amazing. I've always wanted to Steve Harvey screaming over it too. I've always wanted to go to a game show taping or taping? be on one. It seems fun. You know, a game show I've never seen before, not even like a little bit. Millionaire Price is Right. I've never seen oh, one second. I haven't second seen a ton of it. I have not seen one second of it. Yeah. That's Actually, that's not true. The one I saw one clip of it on YouTube of Aaron Paul on it, which is losing his mind. Yeah. When he was younger. But I didn't see him actually playing. I that seems to be a uh sick from home staple of mm-hmm. children. And I just never went to it. I think maybe because my parents had HBO. So I was always <laughs> watching Dunstan mm. checks in and stuff. Wait know? a second, <laughs> but I do recall so there was nothing in Family Feud that was fake because that clip of Aaron Paul, there was an interview. Price is right. Price is Right. There was a clip of him on the Price is Right, and then there's an interview of him being, you know, now when he's famous, they're asking him what it was like, and he was told that the producer told him to just be as like energetic as. That's possible. what they do. Uh, yeah, on Price and is Right, they, they, so they, he yeah. said he drank like five Red Bulls. Yeah, <laughs> and was just out of his fucking. Yeah, people mind. act insane on that. Show. Uh, did they say anything like that? Was there any no. coaching? No, there was other no coaching. than just. It was just like, hey, just think simply, don't overthink it. Yeah, they said have fun. Walk me through what was it like when you first got there? What, like you get there, you check in through security. So you get there, they pull you to the back, they you check in, and then you go to your trailer. How was the trailer? It, yeah, it's pretty small. They, the smaller. Is this in than, Chicago. It was in. Is in L.A. It was oh, they shoot, here shoot. in LA, yeah. Oh, I thought smaller than the trailers. We actually flew we in have. my family and Tammy's family and some other family to like watch it, watch That's Family View, which was fun. Uh, we go in the trailer, you hang out, and then you're actually watching the episodes taping right before you. Yeah. So we watched, I think, Joe Coy. Funny enough, Joe nice. Coy. The guy in Harold and Kumar. Oh, oh, oh John yeah, yeah. John, John no, no, not John Cho, the it's other Cal, guy. Cal Penn. Cal Penn. He was playing oh. as Jack Cal Penn. Uh, we I were watching it. that and then, you know, we we're playing the game, hanging out with Nathan Chen and his family backstage and the, by the trailers. And then we go in, they have hair and makeup. Nice. They get good, uh, green room snacks. No, the snacks were not. Here's another right. good question. Were you satisfied with how they did your hair? They didn't do much. They were like, you look great. <laughs> nice. But they do add makeup just to make sure you don't glare. Then you walk up to a room, they're hoarding you. They help the producer says, you know, are you ready? And, and all this, you know. Stay in your place, blah blah blah. What was the crafty situation like? I don't remember any snack. For, honestly, for those that are listening, all. craft services is it's they call the table crafty. It's where they have all their little snacks. It uh, wasn't great. I'm it just wasn't great. taking over the podcast because we're talking about game shows. Uh, t- top to bottom, you it's live. It's live to tape, right? It's not actually really. They, they cut a part that I thought they would leave in, which is when I went up to answer the stripper question. I choked because I was oh well, I like like I audibly like. Cause I <laughs> just like answering the question is you know it's not you're terrified just, just, just a stripper. It's like a stripper. Right I've never seen one before, so I was like, uh. not before last night. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, Steve Harvey made a joke about that. You know, riffing is like you know whatever, and they cut the whole thing out. Mm. But I think probably because it was not like family friendly. I don't know. I don't actually don't. But know. other than that, more or less, pretty pretty on the rails. Like they. I think we taped for like 45 minutes and it was like a wow. 20 minute episode. Wow. It, that is efficiency. Sarah and I went uh, a few years ago to see Conan tape. Yeah. Just because I did that too. I've seen Conan. Because we were like, let's, let's go. 
He and it was when he was doing the TBS thing where it was like shaved down to I don't know it was like thirty minutes or forty five mm-hmm. minutes. He came out. He did the whole show. He walked off stage. I don't think they had to cut a second of it. Wow. It was just like there was not a single mistake. That's the dream. It was wild. They may have cut down some of the interviews, but I remember watching it after the fact and being like, wow, he really got that down to a science. That's just like us on Pod Watcher. Exactly. They don't <laughs> yes. cut a second of this yeah. podcast. Matt was out. telling us recently, he's like, you guys have gotten better at sort of self-censoring <laughs> yourself. But <laughs> You know what's funny is this week you've made it the hardest one. So. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell a story about uh, Jeopardy? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So my brother was on Jeopardy and we went and that was the most sufficient thing I've ever seen in my whole life. Really? They, they said Alex Trebek, it was the Trebek years. He worked 42 days a year. He would shoot five episodes a day. He would shoot what two. The? He would shoot two weeks of shows in two days. Essentially, a week a day. A week a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, so basically, it was completely live to tape. We quieted down during the commercial breaks. Um, he would ask a question to the audience or whatever, and he would be very quick about it. And the second he was talking to some child, and the second that they were like, he knew where to look to find out where where to be. He would just immediately stop talking to the kid. <laughs> back to the Incredible. Incredible. And then um, there was one moment during a commercial break where he had mispronounced something. And so I've never seen this before in my whole life. They would play the audio from the beginning of the sentence. And then when the word that he had to repronounce came up, he would just say it in the exact same cadence. Wow. And he, it was just him very calmly listening. And then he would say like, Cairo. <laughs> yeah. and then that was it and oh they so just they just go, loop it in they would just loop it right in wow Dude, that's yeah. insane it was, I mean you gotta imagine the guy was doing it for so long everybody just five, got five shows so a day. good yeah. It. yeah just the nuts and bolts of that machine very finely remarkable old. wow it's different when you shoot six episodes of ghost files of a year you know yeah. yeah and then you're like I haven't done this in a year and then we show up without <laughs> our flashlights <laughs> yeah we show up without our flashlights the first three episodes with true story <laughs> Uh, Not Ghost Files. That was the unsolved days. Yeah, now we always have our flashlights. But we we also do That's the Ghost Files difference. We remember our flashlights. That's right. But still have to kind of remember how to ghost hunt when we first show up on set. Steven, who roasted you worse? Steve Harvey on Family Feud or Ronnie Chang on... Oh, uh, absolutely Ronnie Chang. (laughs) I'm discredited. Yeah. I wish I could pull up that slack. What did did they say? (laughs) Just after you shot that episode, you slacked us immediately and you were like, well, I think it'll be an episode, but I got to go log off and lay down for the rest of the day. <laughs> There's moments like that in my life every single day, man. That's, how, that's why I don't get any sleep. Oh, you know, um, this reminded me of the other day I was talking to a friend and he's, uh, he's dating, a, uh, he's a new girlfriend. And uh, I asked to see a photo of her, you know, just casually. Show me pics. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's just not. You, you just ask for a photo. Just so you me, can give it two thumbs up or two thumbs down. But then I realized as he was pulling <laughs> up the rate. photo that I didn't know how to react in a way that would be supportive but not creepy. <laughs> hey, <laughs> yo, <Whoa>. what? The- <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not, I completely understand what you're saying. So yeah. I was like <laughs> in my head. Wow, I, she's really sexy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and my wife was there, and all the friends were there. <laughs> <laughs> And so I don't remember exactly <laughs> what I did, <laughs> but I was like, "Oh, mm. <laughs> just to be like, Mamma mia!" <laughs> like, <laughs> what? That's a, what? the noise you made, like an old, oh. like an old Asian lady it's stubbing like, oh, her toe. Nine, nine. <laughs> <laughs> what did I exactly did I say? It was basically to that effect. Um, Honestly, oh, this it, it haunts me. That that moment haunts me. Yeah, well, that's a tough situation to be in. How should you react? <laughs> that you put yourself in. <laughs> well, no, yeah, I, I screwed it up because I was like, I, I should have well, even asked. I, to that begin might with. be fun. Right, we're gonna go to you, Shane. How would you react? You're looking at a photo. Three, two, one. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah See, sounds- here's the thing. I wouldn't ask in the first place. <laughs> that's that's also. This happened to me recently because my brother is dating somebody. And he was showing me and my wife the picture. And I had the same kind of like, <laughs> how do I react to this photo in a way that doesn't be like great for you, but then also you doesn't make do my wife be like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I, yeah, What'd you do? I think I was just like, all right. Yeah. She looks good for you. She, she's cute. And then, my, yeah, that's, that's kind of, I think, what I said. But you have to say <laughs> it at that 
and pitch then tone, level. You have yeah. to say that. That's, that's cute. I got really I got cute. higher and higher pitch as I talked. Well, that's the problem. Oh, yeah, yeah, that sounds like a lie. Yeah, a- <laughs> I like her. Buzz your girlfriend. Yeah. Woof. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Buzz your girlfriend. <laughs> Woof. <laughs> Did uh, you know? Do you know the <laughs> trivia behind that photo? Yeah, it's like the it's like the uh, the art director's daughter or something. No, it's his son. <laughs> oh, in, oh, in a way, they were like, yeah, we yeah. don't want to make fun of an actual <laughs> girl. That's really Kevin funny. He's very kind. So they put a wig on the guy's son. And <laughs> that's anyway, fucking that's, hilarious. That's family feud for me. Uh, it was a good time. And Steve Harvey, bring Watcher on. We'll we'll come in. The good news is we'll be good on Fast Money. We've learned yeah. that today. Yeah. Let's move on the pencils. Really and by fun. the way. I like pencils. Oh, you're gonna love <laughs> it's a little uh, throwback to last episode. I, I like pencils. What's this? Oh, you brought a sharpener. What is this? Is this? It's a pencil sharpener. No, no, what is the language on it? It's uh, Japanese. Is it? Are you? Yeah, you're Japanese, right? So I don't fuck. I mean, I, I wouldn't know. I'm, <laughs> this man's half Japanese. Yeah, well, I'm. I bring dishonor to my family. Here are the pencils we've got, and I'll pass them around as I talk. We've got oh. um, Mitsubishi. Nine eight five zero HBs rubber tipped pencils. I don't know what it means by rubber, rubber tip. That sounds cool. I don't like Look that. At the nice box. This is a um. We've got a Golden Bear, uh, number two, HB. Okay. Really stunning. This I looks, mean, also just look at the. This feels cheap. Now this Mitsubishi. Bear, like, feels cheap. It feels like off brand. They make a lot of stuff. They do. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. They make pencils. Uh, Forest Choice Graphite pencils number two HB. Those look. These. Can look I nice. open the box up? Yeah. Another Mitsubishi matured micro graphite lead 9800 HP. Do we have our classic Ticonderoga in here? And these I've heard a lot of good things about. Tombow 2558s. Whoa. <laughs> you're doing, you're on Rubber the tipped pencil. I'm, I'm like legit excited to write this these color. Photos. Pretty. That's the thing. It's, it, I sound high, you know, when I talk about this, but I have such an appreciation for like like the the craftsmanship of these things well, well somebody mm-hmm. said that we should call this podcast hyperfixations. well yes absolutely what do they fucking do with the no i just want to if you're not if you're on the video version i want this i want to paint my bedroom this color well i'm excited because it seems like you guys have pencil fever it's like <laughs> now me. i do yeah i wish i could throw these like darts yeah it like like uh, bullseye from daredevil yeah or like that guy uh from uh, mystery men who threw forks remember him yeah sure Okay, Hans Azaria. Hank Azaria? Hank, <laughs> Hank, Hans. Hans Azaria. Hans. Um, okay. Oh, I'll let you guys write first. Um, the way I like to do it is you just write the name so you can remember which is which. You know, you, you start Oh, that's a good way to do it. I would have just wrote my own name like a dumbass. Golden Bear and see if there's a difference. See if the, you know, the vibes are right. Okay. So you sharpen one. some pencils and Shane is passing the pencils and the pad around for people to write in. What are you doing on. over there? You got a clipboard? Oh. Boy. Oh my God. I have an obsession with clipboards. Well, you're going to love this one. Oh. This is a pen code That's why we have them on FYA. It's very nice. And I love also rulers and okay. protractors. Okay. Ryan's writing. Ryan, tell us what you're starting I'm going to start with. The Mitsubishi 9800. And what's the, what does it say lead type on there? Uh, does HB. It? HB. What does HB mean? Oh, I think it's a little harder than B. Hard boy? Hard boy, yeah. <laughs> Is that what it means? <laughs> yeah. it, it does say matured. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Here we okay. go. Uh, I'm going to put it at... I forgot how nice it is to write with a pencil. That's what I'm rediscovering lately, man. So because I've been that. such a pen head lately. You have been. That I'm just going crazy on pencils. Okay, so now this is a forest choice. Forest a nice choice. wooden. I mean, they're all wooden pencils, but this is, it keeps the wooden grain on the outside. No paint. In, in lightness to darkness, the lead grade uh, goes 9H, 8H, 7H, 6H, 5H, 4H, 3H, 2H, H, F, H, B, B, mm. 2B. 2B, 3B, 4B. Shubi. Five B's. <laughs> I love you. There's that many. Eight B and nine XXB. This is interesting. Oh, look at this. I like this guy. This is the Mitsubishi 9850 HB, but on the back it says smooth writing pencil for office use. For office use, yeah. Oh, the H in, in, in HB stands for hard and the B stands for black. Oh. A pencil marked HH is very, very hard. All right, let's write with this next pencil. I honestly did not tell any kind of in you know, kind of discernible difference. Oh, Give actually, the notes. you know Noticing what? Something? This is pretty smooth. The Mitsubishi 9850. There is like a, uh, 
I could feel the sharpness of the tip, though, on the Mitsubishi 9800. So I don't know. It'd be between those two so far as my favorites. The Forest Choice, the wood grain one, surprisingly not that great. Here's the Golden Bear. People love this one. I was and making fun of this tomb- one. These two, I think you've saved the best for last because people really like these. We'll see because the Golden Bear, I thought the packaging looked like shit. So Okay. This feels very similar to the Mitsubishi 9800. Mm, interesting. I, interesting. I don't know if I'd be able to identify these blindfolded. I'll say and, that. And look, except I for the Mitsubishi 9850, I could identify that one. Listeners, I encourage you, but you know, go out there and buy these pencils and listen to this two weeks later when they arrive. And high, do it. Do this for yourself. High quality Tombow. Tombow. 2558. This one, I don't <laughs> like at all. To be honest, I. I it has that sensation that you get sometimes, and this is one of my, I fucking, I forgot how much I hated this when I was what in is school. It? What is the squeak? When you're writing with a pencil and you could tell that the lead is kind of loose, it feels like it, the tip's going to snap. Interesting. And this huh. feels like a very frail tip. Really? Fascinating. Let me try the top. You know what I'm talking about, right? Now, are you, in any of these, are you factoring in like the look of it? Uh, or is it just a purely experiential for the right it's all of for it. your hand. It's all of it. I like that the Mitsubishi ones named them like their car models. Uh, the uh, the I will say the only one that I could probably identify is the Mitsubishi 9850, the one that says smooth use. Yeah. That one felt different. Did it feel smooth? The other ones felt similar enough. Tombow I could probably identify for bad reasons. I would Steven? have to say. Whoa, that. these are very different. Yeah? It's, it's actually crazy. The so sensation. what are you comparing right now? Oh, just, uh, just all of them. Yeah. It's whoa i wasn't expecting to have such a variety of experiences trying these i think maybe i have some sort of dull sensory perception when it comes to this because like i was like that's yeah, a pencil i gotta say the tombow is my favorite Interesting. tombow tombow i don't like a pencil that's uh too sharp like too pointed like yeah. it's too yeah. uh yeah too thin i get that well that could be also um, just like the sharp job the sharpening job no no but it's also you can you can feel it in like the way the lead sits on the wood try it's, this it's six, like a good knife i brought a 6b Whoa, just look at fun. this guy look at this chodacious oh, tip yeah my. that's gonna be a really dark dark that tip is soft huge. Lead. the 6b yeah oh the review See, i'm this is too far, but I'm I'm it's deep. Satisfying. I love I love this. It's Wait, really can I fun. try with that? I love you. Yeah, yeah. That, that looks like a chunky tip. You love chunky tips. I do. Let me see here. The Tombo not reviewed all that well. Really? I get it. I get it. I read people saying it was like uh, it's, it seems like it's more like anecdotal people really loving it. Interesting. But this I'm seeing is, a lot of reviews for. Uh, I did really like a them. Mitsubishi Six B, the big boy. Oh, I don't like this. It's at all. fun. Too soft. No, but this is something that it's, like I was doing a lot of woodwork party last summer to try and like to. For like house projects, and yeah. you use a you that's like a construction. Absolutely, pencil. It's, yeah, yeah. It's like for shading. You know, it's it's like a chalkboard, or just to make marks on a pencil. wall. Yeah, right. It's I heavy like du- it. heavy duty. I, I mean, even looking at these though, the Tombow, it looks frail, man. It looks like it doesn't feel frail. Yeah. I don't know where you're getting that sensation. Oof, look at that. Look at that nice sharp line. God. Well, Stephen, you actually have pretty decent handwriting. Good. I don't see your handwriting that often. I I write a lot, but I never see it. I journal. Oh yeah, but then you also you used to write out stuff on graph paper, like the uh, the graphing paper, especially in uh, organic chemistry. You have to be writing in a lot of stuff, and you know that's a heavy duty. I remember at BuzzFeed, he would carry around like a graph paper book. I, I had graph paper, my big pencil, and a protractor, and he would carry it around and he would write his notes on there. What did you yeah. use the protractor for? Straight lines, curved lines, all that kind of stuff measuring a lot so a lot of tables making a lot of tables tables uh, but you know you can do a, a nice little circle with a protractor it's per, i i i love what would you draw a circle for you know if you want to brainstorm you would have a circle oh, like a web thing yeah oh, okay yeah you were always a really good note taker i don't i don't take notes unfortunately i'm a studious guy yeah some would say hmm. yeah fascinating I, the tombow is a very so i've just been over here uh, drawing this whole time it is a definitely a darker oh that's nice too yeah yeah Anyway, now now it looks like we have an orange eraser, a white eraser, a, a kind of a salmon, co- yeah. a, a coral, you and then one with no eraser. What, what, what erasers do you prefer? Um, I don't have eraser thoughts really, as long as they don't leave any kind of like streaks. Some of the pink the the pink ones are so rubbery that they actually like leave like a like a pink streak on yeah, the page. Yeah, that that orange one on the um on the on the golden bear seems like it might. Yeah, that looks Let like a bad see. eraser. No. 
Oh, wow. That's pretty wow. good. Really nice. That that pencil aesthetically is my favorite. Let the record it's show that the eraser gorgeous. did not leave Mark. Maybe Don't worry, guys. The third time we talk about pencils, it's that's the, the it's, That's it's, the best time. I think that's the inflection point, actually. And when it gets easier. Anyways. Wonderful. I think that does it for this episode of Pod Watcher. If you like the podcast, go ahead and subscribe to it wherever you listen to it. Or if you're watching this, subscribe to the channel. It does help us keep making the podcast. And if you're on audio, go ahead and rate this bad boy. Five stars. It'll help quite a bit. But other than that, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. 